fear that Venezuela is sort of dissolving into civil war. Opposition leaders taken from their homes in the middle of the night. Heritage Foundation Latin America policy analyst Anna Quintana and the victims of communism, executive director Marion Smith. Marion, um, this is a whole nother level scary when you start seeing this kind of stuff. Um, but with little regard for the PR fallout, what do you make of that? Well, I think what we're seeing is the live coup, an unfolding crisis situation in Venezuela, where the regime of Nicolas Maduro, backed by the communist regime, the Castros in Cuba, who, by the way, have thousands of embedded military personnel in Venezuela, uh, guiding some of the intelligence, secret uh, police and military actions by the National Guard uh, there in Venezuela. So that's an uh, underreported part of the story. Uh, we should call for the immediate uh, withdrawal of all Cuban military personnel from the territory of Venezuela. But essentially, Maduro has consolidated power. Uh, the illegal election that took place uh, was uh, uh, the establishment of an extra constitutional institution uh, that is going to allow him to amend the constitution, uh, outlaw uh, opponents, uh, political opponents. Uh, they've established truth commissions, uh, which are uh, promising to be nothing more than sham trials of political uh, opposition leaders. And so uh, what, what is happening in Venezuela is akin to the erection of the Berlin Wall. Uh, and if we can stop it, uh, we should, and we can. We're not talking about a power with nuclear uh, capability here. There's really nothing that the Cuban regime or the Venezuelans can do to hurt U.S. national interest than they're already doing. Uh, but the Venezuelan people don't even have a fighting chance with the Maduro regime and the uh, uh, Castros in Cuba conspiring to take away their freedoms and their democratic institutions. Anna, what happens if we see more foreign power involvement, Russia, like, like we did with Cuba uh, during JFK's time, that this, this accelerates to that? Well, I, I think we are continue to see more foreign power involvement. Marion brought up a great point about the Cuban government's role in Venezuela and what's happening is you literally have an occupational force. It's close to 20,000 members, 20,000 Cuban government officials guiding Venezuela's intelligence services. It's even reported that the dictator Maduro, he only surrounds himself with Cuban bodyguards. And I think that's where it's going to make the situation potentially much uh, a, a little bit worse for the United States in terms of how we as the United States and how the international community addresses the Venezuela crisis. And I can only see the situation getting much worse because Maduro has made a drastic power grab with this constitutional assembly and last night's move of arresting, of re-arresting two, uh, two political opposition leaders sends quite the signal that he want, that he's not going down without a fight. Well, and it also sends a signal to your earlier point, Marion, that he isn't too concerned that there's going to be any repercussion for this, right? Well, I mean, what, what's happening here is clear. Maduro and the failed socialist policies uh, for two decades have left what was once one of the wealthiest uh, countries in Latin America, uh, a population that can't even feed itself. The average Venezuelan has lost some 19 pounds in the last year. Basic medical supplies, basic foodstuffs are missing from the country. And it's for that reason that Maduro, and for good reason, believe that he's going to lose the general election that was uh, scheduled for next October. And this is his attempt to consolidate power, take away the ability of the uh, Venezuelan people to choose a new leader. And so far, I mean, he has the full backing of the Cuban regime, uh, which even the United States for now uh, three years has had an uncertain line on. Uh, when you have, you know, Bolivia, Nicaragua and Cuba uh, supporting this action by Maduro, and you have, uh, frankly, a somewhat late response by Western governments to condemn this. We have a long uh, tradition of U.S. foreign policy, protecting our national interest and but protecting our values. But I would worry about the here. neighborhood. Uh, you know, Anna, real quickly, Colombia mm -hmm. comes to mind. Anna, do you worry about Colombia? Yep, whether it gets dragged well, into this? No, I'm. I'm you know, I, I think Colombia Colombia shares a border with Venezuela, and I think right. they they recognize that they have to step up, and, and they are stepping up. I mean, right in Latin America alone, 11 countries have stepped up and said that they will not recognize the illegal constitute the illegal constituent assembly. And I think the outlier in all of this, and I think the the decisive factor is. 
President Trump and his administration. I mean, we are seeing a significant and positive shift away from President Obama's failed strategic patience uh, doctrine, where since since Trump has been in office in a little a little over six months, he has sanctioned over two dozen Venezuelan government officials. Over two dozen of them, all of their assets in the United States have been seized by U.S. authorities. They are no longer allowed to travel to the United States. The vice president has been sanctioned as a drug kingpin. Over half a billion of his assets, of his illicit assets, have been seized in America. That's close to $600 right. million dollars he had in this country, so it's quite significant. All right, we'll watch very closely. Guys, I want to thank you both very, very much. A reminder, the uh, 